We're going to be, this morning, looking at a missionary psalm, Psalm 67, in which the Israelites are called to missions. In Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus said, Go and preach the good news to everyone in the world. That's from the contemporary English version. He had given these same instructions several times to his disciples. But this time, it was just after his resurrection, and Jesus was reminding them one more time that the message of the good news about God is for everyone. This commission is not just penned in the New Testament. It is also found several times in the Old Testament, from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, it is also found um, that we have the very heart of God to reach the nations. We see in Genesis 12, verse 3, that God blessed Abraham for the specific purpose that he would become a blessing to many nations, not just to one nation. And that Solomon dedicated the temple he knew that this temple represented God's presence in Israel. But that presence was for everyone. He prayed that all the peoples of the earth may know that God, that the Lord is God, and that there is no other. Found in 1 Kings 8, verse 60. And when Isaiah referred to this same temple, he said that it was a place where all nations could come to seek the Lord in prayer. God said to Isaiah in chapter 56, verse 7, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. And then in Revelation 7, we see a time when God will greet all the peoples who have been saved throughout all history. The people will come from everywhere. No people group, tribe, or nation is left out. This is God's ultimate plan and desire from the beginning, to save people from every nation on earth. It is God who is working to bring the nations to himself. He may work through man, but for the results and thus the glory, they are all God's. Today we're going to focus on one specific psalm, Psalm 67, which shows that the fullness of God's glory and also will show us that uh, it is his desire that all the people and all the nations would be saved. In this psalm, we will see that God wanted Israel to be concerned not only about their own circumstances within their own borders, but also be concerned about the eternal condition of all nations Psalm 67 is a prayer of the Israelite nation. Let's read it now, starting at verse 1. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be, will be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. We see right away that God doesn't bless his chosen people because they are good and worthy. God's elect receive his blessings so that they can share these blessings with others and draw attention to his greatness and his mercy. It is especially evident here in these words that we have a God who is concerned about all the nations and he wishes to draw them all to himself. Warren Worsby wrote, The author of this psalm is unknown, but it is someone who had a vision for the whole world. As followers of God, in order that we might bring him glory, we are also called to have a vision and a burden for other people. 
the psalmist is demonstrating that there is a connection between the blessings of God on his people and the spreading of the message. Graham Goldsworthy echoed this thought when he wrote, even the missionary focus of Psalm 67 emphasizes that God himself must act for the nations to be blessed. The main focus of this psalm is to demonstrate the blessings of God showered on his people and then calling his people to take that saving message to other nations. This psalm presents many reasons of why God saves and blesses us. The first reason is so that other nations would come to know him. That's found in verses 1 and 2. And then that they would praise him, found in verses 3 and verse 5. And also that the nations would enjoy him and praise him, and found in verse 4. And also that they might fear him with an awe and a reverence in their hearts, verses 6 and 7. Psalm 67 is a prayer that Israel is praying in which each Israelite personally wants God to be glorified beyond their borders and into the world of the Gentiles. And so we see that the psalm is a call to missions. The heart of God cries out to all nations, drawing them to himself. Throughout this whole psalm, we see that Israel is looking to spread the message of God's goodness and grace to their neighbors. Why? Well, first of all, it's because the world needs the light of his love shining in their lives. Look at the very first verse. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Israel is remembering that these are the very words the priest prayed over the nation found in Numbers 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And so, in this first verse, the psalmist, on behalf of the nation, is asking God to grant them these three things. Be gracious to us, bless us, and make your face shine on us. Note that the fact of these requests are all corporate. That is, we know that many of us ask God to bless us personally, or perhaps bless someone that is close to us. But here, the request is that God will grant all these things to all his people. Look at what the people of God are requesting in their prayer. May God be gracious to us. Remember Dennis the Menace, the comic strip character? In one story, he and his friend Joey are outside Mrs. Wilson's house, and she has given them some freshly baked cookies. Joey asks Dennis, I wonder what we did to deserve these cookies. And Dennis replies, Mrs. Wilson gives us cookies, not because we are nice, but because she is. So what does this mean, to be gracious? The Hebrew word grace is chanan, meaning the state of goodness and kindness and favor towards someone, generally with a focus on a benefit that is given to the recipient. The idea is that God would show tender mercy and care for his people. For God to be gracious to his people means not giving them what they deserve. In other words, because all people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, all people deserve only God's wrath and condemnation. But for his chosen people, God has determined to give not what we deserve, but something else entirely, grace. God deals with his people in grace, not because they are nice, but because he is. The second prayer request, 
was, may God bless us. To be blessed means to be favored by God. Blessings, therefore, are directly associated with God and come from God. So when you say, the Lord bless you to someone, non-believers would see it as a bestowing a wish on them. But believers would see it as a mini prayer for someone. And that prayer will be that that person will experience the favor of God in their lives. Notice that the psalmist is not saying, bless me so that I can be comfortable, or bless me so that I don't have to work to make a living. Bless me so that others will be envious of me, or bless me that I can be successful in the eyes of the world. He's not even primarily saying, bless me so that I can bless others. The reason why the psalmist asks for these blessings is made clear in verse 2, so that God's ways will be known on the earth, that his light may shine in the darkness that dwells in the other nations. The psalmist is quite specific. He is saying, bless me so that I may glorify you. Bless me so that I may show your power, your love, your majesty, your goodness to all the nations. All blessings come from God, and without his blessing, nothing is right. And God loves to bless his people. And God blesses us first and foremost so that we might bring glory to his name. In the Alpha Course, one of the questions people ask is, why are we here? What is our purpose as human beings? And the answer is found in Scripture, and especially in this psalm. We are here to make his ways known to all the earth. And the Gospel of John explains this purpose even clearer. John wrote that God is glorified when we share his message with others and when we become more fruitful. So today, our question becomes, how do we glorify God among our neighbors and our friends so that they might, in turn, glorify him? For one thing, we can invite them to the Alpha Course. It's designed in such a way that their questions would be answered about God. Going back to Psalm 67, we see that after the nation had prayed for God's grace and for his blessings, we see the third prayer request. May God shine his face on us. A person's face is very revealing. Often we can see the emotions of people by the looks on their faces. You can tell when someone is not happy because their face will be very downcast. And if they are happy, it is said that their face will shine. Notice that the psalm is not saying about what, what the... Notice what the psalm is saying about God's face. The Lord may make his face shine on us. What a wonderful gift. God looking on us with pleasure. Psalm 147, 11 says, The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. And knowing that his face shines on us, and beca not because of who we are or because of what we've done, but because we are his child. And there is no greater source of peace and power in life. And as our neighbors and friends become sons and daughters of God, his face will shine on them as well. So we've been looking at reasons why this psalm is a call to missions. And we see that the first reason is because the world needs the light of God shining both in and through them. And we come to the second reason why this is a mission psalm is because complete and pure joy will come to those who know him. David shows that this true joy comes from God's presence in our lives. Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the way of life. 
granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. That's from the New Living Testament. In Psalm 67, verse 4, we read, May the nations be glad and sing for joy. The desire of the psalmist is that all the nations would come into both a knowledge and a joy of the Lord, and that that joy will lead them to praise his holy name. Verse 4 is showing us that God's salvation induces the most profound joy. This joy is not rooted in healthy human relationships, although it's good to have those relationships. It is not rooted in success or in health. It is not even rooted in social interactions with others, although that is also something we need in our lives. The most profound joy comes by knowing and trusting in who God is. Israel experienced this joy when they returned to God, learning to trust in him once again. Reading from Isaiah 35, verse 10, those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. We have joy today because of who God is. Let's continue to praise him with great joy for his gracious, great, glorious grace, for his justice, for his caring guidance, and for his provision of his blessings. When the psalmist takes the same idea, may all the people praise him, found in verse 3, and repeats these exact same words in verse 5, he is enfolding the joy of the people around the glory of God. The point is very clear. True gladness and joy are rooted in God and nothing else. And this glorifies God. Remember, this is a prayer of the people to the one true God. And in it we see a deep concern for the people of other nations. Today, when we request these same things from God for our neighbors and our friends, we are praying according to the heart of God. The heart that desires that none should perish, but all would come to repentance. We read this in 2 Peter uh, 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It is a task of all of us, belonging to the family of God, to bring the good news about salvation to all the peoples of the earth. So, we've seen that this psalm is missional because it reflects both the need of the world for God's light shining on them and for the joy that the Lord, uh, of the Lord in their hearts and the third reason that this can be called a missional psalm is that the world needs the sustaining life that only God can give. Verse 6 and 7 tells us that the harvest is ready. In this psalm, it is evident that we have a God who is concerned about all the nations and he wishes to draw them to himself. God followers in order to bring him glory, are also called to have a burden for the nations. This psalm shows us that we are to be concerned with not only our own lives and with the circumstances in our own backyards, but we are also to be concerned about the eternal condition of all races, tongues, and tribes. And so, in these last two verses, the psalmist talks about the blessings that come with the harvest. Because whenever the gospel is preached, if you sow good seed, sooner or later, you are going to reap a harvest of souls. The first thing we see in verse 6 is a simple statement of fact. The land yields its harvest. When we use the words, the harvest, when, we, when referring to farming, we realize that there are many variables to deal with. The weather, 
pestilence, and even enemy armies coming to destroy. So, bringing in the harvest is always a miracle. There is no harvest unless the Lord provides it. It is the same idea when Jesus tells us to pray to our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Because there is no bread unless he provides it. When we bring in the harvest, it is a sign of God's blessing in the past. When we did the work of preparing the ground and planting the seed. And because he has blessed us in the past, we know that he'll bless us in the future. But the psalmist goes further. He prays that all the earth will come to know him, will be blessed, and will fear him. In other words, along with the harvest in the fields, let there be a harvest in the nations. Jesus speaks to his disciples of this other harvest the harvest of souls, found in John 4, 35. Do you not say there is still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I tell you, raise your eyes and observe the fields, that they are white for harvest. It's from the New American Standard. The psalmist knows that there is a harvest of souls in the other nations, ones who need the presence of God in their lives. The psalmist wants them to see how God has blessed Israel so that they might also learn to trust in him and to come to faith in him. Psalm 67 is an invitation for all of us to pray for the nations, that they might come to experience his light shining on them to know the joy of his presence and to gain his sustaining life now and forever. As we pray for these things, may we feel an urge to become engaged in the answer to this prayer, to get involved in the spreading of the message of God in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, within our own families, and in our communities. The question we need to ask about accomplishing this commission that we have been given is not how do we go to the nations, but instead we should be asking how do we minister to the nations that we have around us. The psalmist here wanted to teach all of God's people to use the blessings, the gifts, the talents that God has given us to spread the joy of God's glorious saving grace to all people. One of the prayers found in the book entitled Charles Spurgeon's Prayers reads, Lord, arouse us to a deep concern for all with whom we come in contact from day to day. Make us all missionaries at home or in the street or in our workplace, wherever providence has cast our lot. May we there shine as lights in the world. When you go into your workplaces or your homes, you go as someone that God has set apart for his purposes. You go as a witness of the gospel, someone with a story to tell of what God has done in your life. Through these next months, may we not forget to pray for the ones that God lays on our hearts to invite to an Alpha course. And as we pray, also pray for our nation, for our community, for our neighbors and friends. Let's also pray for ourselves. That we, like Paul in his missionary journey, would be willing to forsake every hindrance before us so that our mission is achieved for the sake of God's glorious grace. God has been gracious to us. He has blessed us and has made his face shine on us. And now may that blessing be extended to others through you. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you 
Thank you that you have blessed us. Thank you that you are here with us. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you that you have gifted us. And Lord, I just pray that each one of us will be faithful to the task that you are giving each one of us individually, that we might be faithful to spread your word, your message to those that you bring into our sphere. So Lord, we just pray that you will continue to keep your hand on us, to guide us and lead us. And we just thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.